I'm Congresswoman Julia Brownlee. Welcome to my digital teach-in. This weekend, we celebrate the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. In honor of Dr. King's fight for economic justice, I'm answering your questions about the Republican tax bill that was recently signed into law and its impact on working families here in Ventura County. I've invited some of my colleagues in Congress to join the teach-in to share their perspectives on this new law. Well, thank you so much for allowing me to share what would have been uh, the 89th birthday of Martin Luther King Jr. with all of you. Uh, in a few weeks, April 4th, we will commemorate the 50th anniversary of his assassination. And between now and then, I'm hopeful that people will focus on what King's life and teachings were all about. The thing that Dr. King uh, recognized, and he said it very succinctly when he said, it is one thing to fight and be, to be able to eat a hamburger at a lunch counter. It's something else again to be able to afford to purchase the hamburger. A recognition on his part that economic inequality was just as important for us to pursue as anything else. And that's why during uh, this weekend, many of us will be having teach-ins on the winners and losers in this, what I like to call, tax scam uh, that the Republicans have visited upon the people of this country. Uh, this so-called reform is great for wealthy families, not too good for working families. Over 80% of the value of benefits coming out of this reform law will go to wealthy people. And the pittance that will go to working men and women is only temporary. So what we've got to do, it seems to me, is get people to understand that we have tried trickle-down trickle down economics and it's never worked. So while we celebrate his 89th birthday, let's keep in mind that so much of what we're doing here in the Congress will not further his work. And let's make sure that we conduct ourselves not just this weekend, but throughout the year, to do the things that are necessary uh, to further his work. So let me close by uh, mentioning a little part of Martin Luther King Jr.'s letter from the Birmingham City Jail. He wrote that letter, which I like to call, uh, outside of the Bible, maybe the most timeless thing that I've ever read. He said in that occasion, when people told him that what he was doing uh, was a good thing. The cause was right, but the timing was wrong. Cain told us in that letter that time is neutral. Time is never right. Time is never wrong. Time is always what we make it. And he said to us in closing the thought that he was coming to the belief that the people of ill will in our society make a much better use of time than the people of goodwill. And we are going to be made to repent, not just for the vitriolic words and deeds of bad people, but for the appalling silence of good people. So this weekend, throughout this year, let's break our silence.